And welcome back to the Spinner Rack, presented by Comics Remixed, episode 64. As always, I'm your host, Big B. Brian, and I'm joining my co-host. Jimmy Ruiz. How's it going, man? Are you ready to actually talk some comics this week? Comic-related news, yeah. Like, actual comic book-related news. Yeah, I mean, I've got some stuff that happens to do with uh, TV and movie, but for the majority, it's it's just comic news. So you, you've you actually got some stuff Comic to bring. Comic-related news. you got some so. stuff to bring to the table today. I've got some stuff. So man. I'm going to go ahead and... i my notes all week. I'm going to let you bring it. No, 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 go ahead. No, start. please. Oh. Be my guest. Oh, all right, all right, all right. <sighs> all right, well, I'm going to start off with um, Chip Zardats, uh, Darsky, Zadarsky. I don't know how to pronounce his last name. I'm sorry I butchered that. He is co-writer and artist on the image book Sex Criminals. Have you read that? I have not read Sex Criminals, but I have heard good things. Dude, that book is awesome. Um, he co-writes it with Matt Fraction. Uh, so Chip was uh, um, awarded a Harvey Award. And he denied it. Really? Yes. But his reasoning is pretty badass. He denied it because he got it as a writer. Um, he, he got it as a writer of humor for Sex Criminals, but he denied it because he says Matt Fraction should, be, should have been on the ballot with him because he's the co-writer. So either Matt Fraction gets an award as well, or he doesn't take it. Nice. Yeah, I, I think that's cool. You know, you're standing That's respectable, up. man. That is. That's very respectable. Um, you're standing up for it for them to give him the nod as the writer of the humor in the book, which when he's just a co-writer, like no man, when it, when you're when you're co-writing a book, both writers need to be recognized as making that book what it is in terms of writing. Absolutely, because Absolutely. you're not sure who's putting in more writing than the other. That's why you're just co-writers. It's fifty-fifty. Both of you get the credit. So kudos to him for doing that, man. Yeah, no, that's props, man. I give him credit. Most people wouldn't do that. No, they wouldn't. They'd be like, hey, good look. I won an award. They'd pull a, a Bob Kane. A Bob Kane. Nice. Or, or a Stan Lee. Nice. Well, speaking of uh, creators, man, something that uh, has been happening at Comic Cons recently. Um, creators, some, not all. <laughs> you could just say comic book celebrities getting out of control. No, no, no. Um, comic creators, in terms of artists, writers, inkers, like when you walk up and down Artist Alley. Right, right. Here's my question to you. And I pose this question to uh, all the listeners and stuff, because uh, Bleeding Cool started, uh, they, they came out with this article and I read it and it got me to thinking, should creators charge for autographs? So let's say you've got your... Walking Dead number one. Right. And you're walking down Artist Alley, and Robert Kirkman just happens to be sitting there saying, Hey, Mr. Kirkman, can I have your autograph? Yeah, sure, 50 bucks. Do you think that's, I guess, proper con etiquette, acceptable on, as a fan? would If that happened to you, what would your response be? And do you think that it's cool for somebody to come across and say that? You know, or I even go one lower with you, and somebody not as big as Robert Kirkman. I feel you know what I mean. I feel real, feel very strange saying this, but I feel like that's kind of like not right. Okay. Yet at the same time, I don't have an issue with like celebrities and TV stars doing it. Okay. I'm not sure why. I have varying sense on the issue, but. Uh, if, Robert, if I saw Robert Kirkman on Artist Alley and I wanted him to sign my Walking Dead number one and he said 50 bucks, I wouldn't be getting that autograph. You would not? No. Because Neil Adams charges 30 bucks for an autograph. Does he? Yep. Neil, It's Neil Adams, though. Okay. It's, I think there's a difference. Okay. That's Neil Adams. Let me rephrase. That's Neil f- Adams. So, it's, you know, it's Neil Adams, dude. So, you think it's okay depending on who the creator is? Kind of like how Stan Lee charges 80 to 100 bucks for his autograph. I think that's insane, but I also realize the uh, amount of, you know, um, like what he's given to the industry. Okay. So. See, so the, the argument can be, or the point can be argued that you are already paying this creator because you've shown support and bought the guy's books. Right. And as a fan, you're like, hey, I respect your work. I purchased it. I think it's awesome. 
can I get your John Hancock on this? You know? But then it goes, like you just said, you're okay with the TV and movie people doing it. Well, it's kind of the same thing. Hey, I bought your movie on DVD. Hey, I paid yeah, but 20 bucks to go see it in the theater. You know, hey, maybe, I watch it on TV. Maybe I just watch Arrow on TV. You know, yeah, I pay for cable, but, you know, I don't know. You see, it's double-edged sword. It is. Or, no, it's double standards. It is double standards. So... So, in your your answer to this, then, is it depends on who the creator is. Yeah. So, if they're big time, you think it's okay for them to charge. But if it's somebody small fry, and they're trying to look at you and be like, five to ten bucks, like, get bent, because you're a nobody kind yeah. of deal. Hmm. Totally. I Well, I think at, like, the coming up level... It's better PR for you to just be like, oh, hell yeah, give me that. I'll sign it. You know what I mean? Right. It looks good on you that if a fan stuff had to watch you to sign something, yeah, I'll sign that. Gotcha. You know, that would that would be like, you know, us being in a con and like someone wanted to be like five bucks. It's only five bucks. Don't be cheap. I'll sign it. Five dollars. Who, who, who the hell are we? I would never charge for my autograph. I would never charge for a photo. If Comics Remix became this big, and I've said this before, if Comics Remix became this big, big entity and we're doing shows and people recognize us right. and they're like, oh, dude, hey, can I get your photo? I'm not going to be like, yeah, 20 bucks. But like, nah, you know who I am. I'm there because of people like you. Dude, you want to take my picture? Take my picture all day. You want an autograph? Fine. Take my autograph. You know, I don't care. It's a signature. To me, my signature is not worth anything unless I put it on a check. I can you know, it. like, dude, yeah, sure. You want my autograph? Fine. You're coming out of your way to come see me. I'm nobody. You okay, know? so what if that then becomes like your, like, really your livelihood? Because, like, I mean, let's face it, like, these guys don't make a lot of money either. Like, right. I, it's actually the the double standard of the fact that I'm okay with TV stars doing it. That's kind of weird because those people make money. You think Stephen Mel isn't making great money? Yeah, right. even better money now that he's getting into film. Yeah, because of, because of the popularity of Arrow, does Stephen Amell need to charge fifty dollars signature? Not that I know that's how much he charges. I'm just speculating. It's around. I'm here. saying, does he need to? That's a good question. See, now it, it could also be argued that the money he makes from that covers his travel if he has to pay out of pocket. Um, it could say that he is using that to pay whatever help he's using for the weekend. You know, I mean, there's, we don't know where that money's going, you know, unless he just takes it right in front of you, balls it up, and just slips it in his pocket. Oh, that's, that's true. You know? This is true. We, we don't know that. Um, but no, I, I would never do that, you know? Um, if it ever came to the point where, like you just said, some people rely on it for their livelihood, it's like, well... <laughs> like Virgil. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Um, no. Like, Neil Adams, what else does Neil Adams do except, I mean, Neil Adams isn't, like, currently, like, drawing anything that's month to month, you know? I think in order to be at the level where, like, uh, let's say we're doing cons and we decide, you know, we have to charge. This is our livelihood now. Either we don't do the cons anymore and we figure out another way of income, or we've transcended what we do to the point where we're so we're household names almost in terms of our our culture and our our world of comics and geekdom and all this other stuff you know like everybody knows neil adams everybody knows robert kirkman everybody knows todd mcfarlane jim lee rob liefeld the the list goes on Mm -hmm. um so those are people that you know their names and you recognize them immediately Mm -hmm. as opposed to putting somebody you know who you know by name because you read their stuff but you're not sure what they look like right you know what i'm saying so if it becomes to the point where it's just like oh dude that's stan lee oh dude look hey it's brian adams right it's junior ruiz yeah okay then maybe you can get away with it and not feel bad because you know it's your livelihood and you've put in enough work over the years to have that sort of reputation where you've transcended Mm -hmm. then maybe but if it's just something where it's just like you know no i wouldn't charge I honestly don't think, like, Robert Kirkman, dude, shouldn't charge at all. Because Robert Kirkman was would be where Robert Kirkman is if it wasn't for fans. And Robert Kirkman got money. 
Right. And wouldn't it be on the con to provide the staff for his quote unquote signing if he was doing one? You know what I mean? Mm hmm. Like, I really think it's all level of where you're at and, you know, do you financially need it to survive, i.e. Virgil. Yeah. You know, Neil, like I said, Neil Adams, I'm sure Neil makes a lot of money doing like, you know, uh, freelance work or, or uh, oh God, what do you call that when you like have someone draw something for commissions? Okay. You know, um, but... Does he make enough to? I mean, we all have to like we have to face the facts here about the industry that we all love, comic books. These people don't make a lot of money, unless like you're writing a lot of books or you're one of the bigger writers. Mm -hmm. You know, like how many writers does Scott? How many books does Scott Snyder write a month? What two, three? I don't know. Do you think well, he he's on the number one selling one? Yeah, true. So you know, he's like the exception to the rule. Okay. Whereas, you know, other guys probably don't make that kind of money. Right. You know, the guy writing, uh, Jesus, I can't even think of anything right now. Yeah, especially because you don't want to insult anybody. Yeah, I don't want to insult anybody. But are these guys that are on the lower level selling books that are relative unknowns, you know what I'm saying? It's, yeah, you know, there's double, there's definitely a double standard there, but I think it's a give and take. I mean... Stan Lee, Stan Lee's old. Let the guy charge whatever he wants. You know, you're paying for, like, the guy's a legend. Yeah. I mean, the guy, I mean, let's, let's, the guy created, you know, he birthed the Marvel Universe. Yeah, sure, there were other people to help them, whatever. That's not, I don't want to get into that argument. So, let the guy do what he wants to do. Because I know, me personally, I'd pay 100 bucks to get a picture and an autograph from Stan. Just because. Right. You know, Because you understand the name value. Stan Lee. Yeah. Right. Right. I understand the brand recognition that is yeah. Stan Lee. Yeah. You know, the icon, Stan Lee. I think we should talk to some creators eventually and, and get their opinions on that. That should be like one, we, we should put that into our, our rotation of questions that every creator that we bring on the show is, gets asked. Right. We, we need should. to make a, a standing list that we ask everyone. We should. Outside That's of just what we ask them about their books. Absolutely. So what else you got there, Mr. Ruiz? Real life superhero, Phoenix Jones. Have you heard of him? I believe so. Years back, when David and I first started doing the Comics Remix live show, we reported about him. Um, so he's back in the news again. Um, and this time he attempted, or he stopped an attempted murder out in Seattle. Really? Yep. Uh, the Free Thought Project has reported that one of America's most active superheroes, Benjamin John Francis Fodder, or otherwise known as Phoenix Jones, uh, stopped an attempted murder that he was uh, that was taking place on Capitol Hill in Seattle. Jones, known for confronting alleged lawbreakers while dressed in a superhero costume, was said to have been patrolling the streets near Capitol Hill when he witnessed three men attacking a defenseless man with a weapon. The men were said to be beating the man viciously, pistol whipping and kicking him from left to right. It was reported that when Jones chanced upon them, he immediately sprang into action, chasing the men down and knocking the weapon away from the man holding it. Reportedly, Jones then kept the suspects cornered until police arrived and arrested them. Police later said the victim was so badly injured that he would not be able to give evidence. In addition, the police, was also, uh, the police also announced that Phoenix Jones had volunteered to give evidence of the attack that almost claimed the victim's life. So, uh, the bloodied victim in the incident wouldn't provide officers with much information about the fight, but a witness, uh, Seattle's infamous mass adventurer, Phoenix Jones, told police he had seen the suspects pistol whip and kick the victim after knocking him to the ground, the police said in a statement. Jones confirmed the incident and his intervention with the police live on camera. He said in a video posted on YouTube, I sprinted out as fast as I could and hit him with a right hand. The gun popped out. Only the scary part was that he didn't get knocked out. Um... And for those that don't know, some background on Phoenix. Uh, he's the leader of a Rain City superhero movement, a Seattle-based citizen patrol group that describes itself as a crime prevention brigade. Initially wearing a ski mask to intervene in public assault, Jones later developed a full costu costume excuse me, and adopted Phoenix Jones as his name. He has said in the past that the best way to prevent being mistaken for a criminal by the police is to wear a super suit. However, local police have expressed concern that the strange costumes may lead to emergency calls from citizens who mistake superheroes for criminals. All the members of the Rain City superhero movement are said to have a military or mixed martial arts background. Jones himself is a mixed martial artist. He is signed a World Series of Fighting where he has fought 
at two catch weights. The brother of UFC Strike Force, um, the brother of UFC Strike Force, and has also fought one championship fighter, Carlos Fedor. Interesting, very interesting. So yeah, there are people out there. Um, I don't know how credible this website is, but I know David and I, like I said, have reported them. Um, I'm reading from a website called anohq.com. Um, like I said, I don't know how credible this website is, so take it with a grain of salt, but we do know that this guy really does exist. So that is very interesting. That is interesting. I find those people, we should get one of those people on the show. That would be very awesome. Talk to a real life superhero. That would be very awesome. That's a food for food for thought for next season, right there, buddy. Yeah, no doubt. But uh, that's crazy, man. I mean, just for somebody to go out of their way, you know, and and I, I don't want to say take the law into their own hands, but to take neighborhood watch to a higher level. Right. You know, I think that's. I mean, the guy could sit home and be safe. What if one of those guys would have pulled the gun on him and shot him for being a good citizen? Yeah, no, totally. You know? Um, so that's definitely something that I think uh, the world de- the world needs a lot more of is just people in general trying to do good without Absolutely. asking for any kind of rewards. You know, my boy Vampiro, he's involved with the uh, Guardian Angels. Is he really? Yeah. I did not know that. I did not know that. But, uh, yeah, no, that's that's very cool, man. It is. It, it really is. If, that's, uh, if there's truth to that, props to Phoenix Jones. Yeah, no doubt. Um, also, I have um, a major announcement. It's supposed to be announced during the Batman panel for Batman vs. Superman uh, at New York Comic Con by uh, executive producer Michael Uslan. Yeah? Um, I'm, I believe I'm pronouncing his name right. He's been an executive producer of everything Batman related since the 1989 Burton movie. Right on. Um, so he's teasing a major announcement for Batman. So... That's for just all, Batman, period? Just That's just all it is. It says, major announcement plan uh, during Batman panel for Batman vs. Superman. Teased by uh, Michael mm-hmm. at uh, the upcoming New York Comic Con. Which is very strange. Excuse me. Hmm. I shouldn't even say strange. Um, it's a lot of speculation right there. Um, what kind of announcement? You know, does it, is it something to do with Batman vs. Superman? I, is it something to do with the future of... The Batman movie franchise. You know, I, I bet it's lot. just the announcement that they're going to do like a trilogy of movies with Affleck. You think so? Yeah. I wouldn't. Because it's I, been I, reported a bunch, but it hasn't been confirmed. Uh huh. But I, I wouldn't doubt that's what it is. No, neither would I. Uh, well, moving in um, to the. I, I had something else comic related, but I went ahead and just made that into a blog, so you guys can go check that out at comicsremix.com. All I'm going to say is. Who and What is Super Zero? Written by Jimmy Palamati and Amanda Connor with Raf, uh, Rafael De Lorette and Marcelo Mayalo on art and John J. Hill on letters. Uh, go check it out. Uh, it's on comicsremix.com from Aftershock Comics. Super Zero. What is it? It was a tease. We need to figure it out. More info coming hopefully soon. Um, moving on into the realm of film and uh, animation. Is there a Ghostbusters animo- animated movie in the works? The rumors are floating around. That yes, there is. Really? Yes. Is the rumor detailing anything on that? No. No details, nothing. Just nothing. that there's a possible anima- animated movie. Yeah, why not? Uh, I would be so happy for that, you know? I'm, uh, honestly, in Ghostbusters news, I'm kind of pissed off that, um... There was all that talk about a Ghostbusters three, and Bill Murray was no, 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 no. And, and now then Harold Ramis dies, and now every single person that was involved in the original Ghostbusters is in some fashion now involved in the new Ghostbusters. Yeah, they're all making cameos. It's such B to the S. Do you Anger. think it had anything to do with uh, animosity towards Harold Ramis in any sort of way? I, why? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, if there was anim- animosity towards health, it's never been spoken of. Right. It's not out in the ether. Very strange. It's very strange. I don't know. How are you feeling about this new uh, Ghostbusters? I'm not feeling it at all. Not at all? Not at all. I'll see it. Right. But I'm not feeling it. Are you feeling it more or less than Suicide Squad? Oh, 
that's harsh. <laughs> that's that's harsh because you know I've been really, really harsh on the squad. Um, yeah, you know I'm about mad at both of them. Okay. Um, I have more interest in Suicide Squad it being a DC based comic book movie. Yeah. So I'd probably say I'm less interested in, in, Ghost in Ghostbusters than the squad. Nice. You know my vitriol towards the squad is really all bad decisions. I read Suicide Squad. I'm a fan of the comic book. It's just their decisions that have been made with it. Um, speaking of Suicide Squad, I don't know if you caught this, but there has been uh, leaks on the movie of who the Joker was torturing. Wasn't it Harley? And it's apparently going to be Harley Quinn, yeah. Right. But that's they're not saying if that's true or not. Obviously, they're not going to admit Right. that's what it is. So, I mean, eh, you know, some people thought it was going to be Robin... Or possibly Batman, which wouldn't have made any no, sense. No, I had heard that it was supposed to be Harley. Yeah. They said that, uh, God, if I remember reading correctly, the scene, like if you, there's a very brief scene where they show him standing over the table and you could see like her hair or something. I, I don't remember exactly what it was, but I I know I had read previously that it was Harley. Um, uh, Stephen J. Davis president of Hasbro Studios and Entertainment and licensing for Hasbro told audiences at the MIP Junior Convention I can't even speak, Jesus let me start that over (laughs) Stephen J. Davis president of Hasbro Studios and Entertainment and licensing for Hasbro told audiences at MIP Junior Conference that Transformers 5 through 8 have been confirmed by the studio by Paramount. Five through eight. Yep. Chapters five through eight in movie movie uh, parts five through eight. Jesus. Yeah. With uh, Michael Bay obviously returning for part five and uh, Mark Wahlberg returning for his character as well. Okay. That's All a right. lot of Transformers. That's, that's a lot of Transformers. Well, supposedly they were in a I believe three month meeting. Uh, if I remember correctly. And with some of the highest, the the most qualified writers currently out right now. Uh Uh-huh. And they came up with such a unique story and just different chapters to it that they realized they can make that many movies out of this. That's a lot of Transformers. That's a lot of Transformers. A lot of Transformers, I got no interest in seeing. (laughs) No, you weren't a fan of the other four. No, right? not at all. Not at all. None of them? None. Not even the first one? Mm-mm. Wow. No. No. Nope. My, my, uh, my last little bit of movie news here, man. Uh, something that I am very excited about that I have seen to close my notes on, which I'm about to kick myself for, um, is some casting that is, excuse me, have, uh, that has started very recently. Like I said, that I'm very excited about, um, because now we're finally getting some news on it. You know, it's been a while since we heard anything, and, uh, like I said, I'm just excited to get it, and if I don't hurry up and find it within the next 30 seconds, I'm going to flip my lid here, um, because I had it, and now it's... That's wonderful. So while you're searching... Yeah, please do. The Canadian Mint is, uh, doing something pretty special. Uh, they're ripping people off now. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, they're doing a uh, set of um, Justice League silver coins. Okay. From the Royal Canadian Mint. Um, they look pretty cool. Uh, the first set's going to be focusing on the Superman family. And then they'll be moving into the larger DC universe. Um, really nice looking coins, man. Is it going to um, be one of those things that's like advertised on like the Home Shopping Network or QVC or something? You like know, it, it might possibly be. Um, as funny as it is, it's the, it's the Canadian Mint, but they're going to be available to uh, the U.S. also for purchase. Okay. Um, they're really nice looking coins. I'm just going to show you a little. I, I've, little, seen, you I've see seen them. them. Yeah. They look nice. They've got nice box artwork. Um, you know, they look cool. The problem people's having is they're charging twenty dollars a coin and they're ten really? coins. Really? Yeah. And they're what? Ten dollar coins. Oh, that's that's nah. Yeah. No. So twenty bucks for ten dollars. Um, I mean, you know, you could argue. What's... That's like that argument when you're a kid and you're trying to like, hey, I, you give me your one dollar, I'll give you my two quarters. Yeah. Because two is more than one. 
Yeah, totally. But I mean, at the same time, you're paying for like artwork, and it comes in a nice box, and I mean. So you're you can, not you're paying for a collector's item. You're paying for a collector's item, not really the coin. Okay. Even though the coin does, you know, retain some value. Uh-huh. Unlike you know a comic book that you could buy today for five dollars, and then you know two years, uh, ten years from now, it'll be worth a quarter. Right. Yeah. At least you know this coin will always be worth ten bucks. That's true. So I mean, they look cool. They look neat. Would I pay twenty dollars for? No. That's just me, though. Right. Yeah, no, I don't blame you. I probably wouldn't buy them anyway. I'm, I'm sure I mean, there's plenty of that's more for, like, the hardcore, in my opinion, more for the hardcore uh, Superman fans as well as um, collectors of items that are, uh, God, what would you call them? Uh, more niche collectors? Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's they're cool and all, but like I said, it's, you know, not... not uh, not anything that I would be too excited about. Right. Um, the creators of Cliffhanger will be reunited. No at, way. Uh, your Comic Con. No way. So Ramos, Campbell, and Joe Mad. Nice. Get back together for NYCC. So Joe Mad finally got away from a video game screen, huh? Oh well, yeah. Did you did you know that Joe Mad uh, is producing a Battle Chasers game? Yes. That will that. continue the story of Battle Chasers. Yeah. And that there will be new Battle Chasers comic books? Yeah, that I don't believe. Woo! We'll see when that happens. Dude, it's all in the Kickstarter. Mm. It's all in the Kickstarter for the game, which is fully funded. Okay. Um, I believe now, will they like... come out on time? That was, because I, I know, I remember back in the day, <laughs> yeah. that was one of the really big issues, was that you always had uh, those cliffhanger books very anticipated, but they were always really, well, yeah, really late. I, I, you know, uh, the only one that I wasn't a fan of at the time was Ramos. Uh, I didn't read, uh, I didn't read Crimson, um, but I was a big fan of Danger Girl and Battle Chasers. Okay. Um, and they both did like were notoriously late all the time. Right. Oh yeah. Um, you know, it's cool they're getting back together. Super excited about that Battle Chasers game. Uh, finally, after you know, fifteen years, we'll get a a, a, a an ending to that story. For those that can remember, yeah, well, I actually just reread it. Did you really? Yeah, it was, it's awesome. That's cool. There's a, a collected edition. It's it's awesome. Um, I mean, I'm just nice to see Joe Man coming back to do what I feel like he does best because I wasn't really a fan of any of the games he's made so far. Mm-hmm. But Battle Chasers, like I said, huge fan. Totally looking forward to it. Nothing, nothing over there. I'm, I wasn't I wasn't big into the cliffhanger stuff, you know. Um, I like that it gave us three really, really great creators in Ramos, Campbell, and Matt, mm-hmm. um, because we all know what the, the success J. Scott Campbell has had. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, we've, we've known the success that Humberto Ramos has had, you know, especially his run on Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. Um, One of the best Spider-Man artists, in my opinion. Yeah, um, definitely. You know, and Joe Mad, in my opinion... Like, I, I love Joe Mad's artwork, but, like, to me, it really shined when he was doing the X-Men stuff in the 90s, mm-hmm. you know? But that's that's just where I feel on it. I, I mean, other than that, I mean, it, it, it might be nice, you know, assuming they can get the stuff out on time. But we'll see where assuming that goes. Assuming they can get the stuff out on time. That was, that was the big issue. With no, it. It, absolutely, man. You know, and Wizard, back when Wizard Magazine was around, man, they were all on their on their jock, man. Uh, totally. But we'll see what happens. What else you got? Um, I've got Watchmen. Ah, yeah, I had that in my notes as well. Possibly coming to HBO. Yeah, uh, Zack Snyder. Television show. Zack Snyder's been in talks with HBO about producing a Watchmen television mm-hmm. show, but that's all there has been. Yeah, that's that's all there is. That's all there is. Now, what do you think it'd be? You think it'd but be it's, something it's, like before at least Watchmen? It's not like you know speculation. It is confirmed by HBO right. that they sat down and had talks with Zack Snyder about it. Um, they haven't said a lot of. There's a lot of speculation going that. I mean, obviously, what would the point of be to having a Watchmen show to pick up after the the, the end of Watchmen? Right. There wouldn't be much point to it. Yeah, I was going to say. Do you think um, it'd be something like that? Do you'd be. Do you think it'd be? Um, it's going to be prequel territory, totally. You think so? Oh, absolutely. If anything, like, if anything, they have an ending to build to. Okay. And I think it might be more about like you know the building of the Watchmen mm-hmm. as a team. 
Right. Um, who knows because how that far wasn't that really, go. Even in the before Watchmen comics, that was more of solo stories for those characters mm-hmm. as opposed to how they really came together, wasn't right. it? I, I believe so. Okay. And I mean, in the story only really touches on that slightly in the book and the movie itself. Yeah. So it would be nice to see, I mean, and HBO is the place for that material, you know. It's oh, very definitely. It's adult-oriented material. You couldn't be in better hands than HBO. HBO produces some of the finest shows in television, in my opinion. Okay. Um, I could name tons. Yeah, please don't. You know, but Game of Thrones. That's all I got to say. <laughs> um, I would be on board to watch that. Um, some people out there, I won't name names, feel like this is just DC's attempt at grabbing at straws because, you know, oh. You think so? No. I think anyone that really thinks that DC Comics is in serious trouble, like, needs to reflect and realize that if they're serious trouble, for the, it's probably the industry as a whole. Because Marvel ain't doing that much better. Yeah, sure, they've got really successful movies, but my opinion, their comic books aren't that great. Right. Well, when yeah, when you look at it as comics, they're both around the same, I, I'd say they're in the same area. By the way, your Super Saiyan Goku fell over. He's like leaning on that bike. Yeah, I know. He's had a few too many, you know. Sure. Um, so I found what I was trying to find earlier. All right. Power Rangers reboot begins testing actors for the lead role. Oh, jeez. What are you oh, jeez yeah, about? I, I looked at, the, I thought about talking about this because I know about, you know, your love for Power Rangers. But I was unimpressed with the actors that they've chosen to test for the roles. Okay. But I'll, I'll go ahead and let you take the lead on this. So the casting's underway for the Lionsgate's upcoming Power Rangers reboot, and Variety brings word on a number of young actors and actresses up for the three main roles, which bothers me. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I read that wrong. Three of the main roles. I was going to say, how do you have three main roles? What are the other two? You know, chop liver. But uh, up for the role of Jason slash the Red Ranger. Now, these three actors, I have no idea who they are because I haven't watched any of these. Um, well, I don't know. KJ Appa from Shortland Street. Does that... Yeah, I don't know nope. who that is either. Austin Butler. They've got him from The Carrie Diaries as well as Arrow. Yeah, I, don't, I don't recognize yeah, him. Yeah, neither did I. I was like, okay, he was on Arrow. Uh, still, you know, Doing what? Well. And Mitchell Hope from The Descendants. Um, It looks like they're going with a clean cut jock looking guy for him mm-hmm. which i guess is fine because that's what jason was right um for zach the black ranger they've got daniel zavato from it follows ross butler from chasing life and brian seen mark from major crimes out of these three i'd probably go uh with brian mark from major crimes none of them i don't know who they are anyway but i'm just none going by them. the photo that's so... shown here I can't believe you're not mentioning that they're going to cast what was a black character as a lighter-skinned person. And I was not trying to African avoid persuasion. that. I was trying to avoid I mean, that. I'm not trying to typecast the Black Ranger as a black person, but I mean, the character was, was black. Very true. You know, if we're going to come, if we're going to sit here and complain well, about white characters being well, black... Well, if you really want to sit there and go there, you got to look at all five of the Rangers, because all five of them were technically stereotypical. Jason was Indian. He was Native American, and he was cast as the Red Ranger. Trini, yellow, she was Asian. Zach Black, Black Ranger. Billy was the blue collar worker, Blue Ranger. Kimberly was the Pink Valley girl, Pink Ranger. What about the Green Ranger then? What about Tommy? What about him? Yeah, see, your that that whole concept kind of yeah goes out the window. I don't know. That was just it wasn't something that I came up with. I, I'm not you. saying it does. Whoever whoever developed that theory. There might have been something and I just don't remember. There's it. some holes up in that. Yeah. And then for uh testing for the role of Kimberly the Pink Ranger are Naomi Scott and Stephanie Scott. Okay, that's kinda odd uh, weird. Um but based off of these two photos, I would go with Naomi Scott. She looks a lot hotter. Um and she gets she brings um from what I could tell, because I, I, I didn't recognize her instantly, so I'm like, let me Google her. So I Googled her, and she happens to be um, non-Caucasian, even though she looks like it in the photo. So I think that would be bring some, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Uh, blah, 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 help me out here. What's the word I'm looking for? Um, I don't know. 
Uh, credibility? No, not credibility. Uh, it has to do with race. Um, ethnicity? Thank you. It would bring some ethnicity into these roles here. Um, so the outlet goes on to say that the studio is seeking young talent for the roles of the Rangers themselves and will likely go to big name stars for the film's antagonists, which would make sense, you know. Uh, screenwriters Zach Zentz and Ashley Miller from X-Men First Class and Thor wrote the screenplay for Power Rangers, which, de- which is described as a modern reinvention of a long-running franchise. In it, a group of ordinary high school s- uh, kids find themselves infused with extraterrestrial powers and must harness those powers as a team to save the world. Original creator Haim Sab- Saban is acting as producer along with Brian Castanelli and Allison Shermore. Yeah, I just want to watch a new Power Rangers movie. Um, it's set to be directed by Project Almanac's Dean Israelite, and Power Rangers will debut in theaters on January 13th, 2017. Wow, that's a lot quicker than I was expecting. They moved it up, I believe. It was supposed to be summer of 2017. I'm good with that. <clears throat> summer is a dangerous place to be releasing movies, man. Especially reboots yeah. that you do uh, in untested waters. Yeah. But it's Power Rangers, man. There's enough fans out there that are going to want to go watch this. Yeah, there's enough of an audience that will get seen. Yeah, like, definitely. Definitely. Um, What else you got, B? So, my wrap for this. Oh, we're done? We're wrapping big, up? Uh, it's going to be a lot. Oh, God. I mean, I know it's going to be a big wrap. Okay. But the big chunk of comic book news is this month is the start of all new, all different Marvel Now. Okay. There are 45 new titles rolling out starting Jeez. this October. Wow. Um, I will name all 45, and then we can just get into little talks about stuff. About, you know, there are some things worth talking about, and some of them just aren't worth talking about. Okay, what do we got? I'll just, I'll just be frank about it. You have got... My page would load. Should have been more prepared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not yeah. like me, because I had all my Power Rangers notes in front of me. No, I have them all. It just takes a bit. So you've got Invincible Iron Man. You've got A-Force. You've got all new, all different Avengers. You've got Un- Uncanny Avengers. You've got New Avengers. You've got the Ultimates. You've got Doctor Strange. You've got Captain Marvel. You've got Sam Wilson, Captain America. You've got Totally Awesome Hulk. You've got the Mighty Thor. You've got Scarlet Witch. You've got Illuminati. You've got Hawkeye. Okay, Ant-Man. stop, 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 stop. Totally Awesome Hulk. Totally Awesome Hulk. Does not sound like an intriguing book. Well, well, the I, title. I'm going to come back to that. I totally plan on it. A-Force does not sound like an exciting book. A-Force is going to be that all-women Avengers book. Okay. Which was, they've had a, a book in during Secret Wars. Right, right. Which, I mean, obviously it'll be different because it's not directly coming out of Secret Wars, but whatever. But uh, Ant-Man's getting a book, Vision's getting a book, Contest of Champions, which I believe is going to be based off of the uh, the game, the mobile game, maybe. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man, Carnage, Spider-Woman, Spider-Man. Carnage is getting his own book? Carnage is getting a book, Dennis Hopeless. It's funny, I got a Carnage shirt on. Nice, Spider-Man, uh, which will be Miles Morales. Okay, so Amazing Spider-Man and Spider-Man. Yep. Okay. So Amazing Spider-Man will be Peter Parker, Spider-Man, Miles Morales. Okay. Spider-Gwen's returning. Silk is returning. Spider-Man 29. Now when you say returning, are these all being launched with new number ones? They're all number ones. So what, Spider-Gwen went up to like six issues? Yep, and and now she's back in the number one. Same thing with Silk. Okay. Web Warriors, um, which is actually going to be like uh, a group of characters from Spider-Verse that they've brought. I don't know if it's going to be like an Exiles type book. That's a lot of spider but books. That's a lot of spider books. That might just be overkill. Uh, you've got, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight spider books. That's a lot of spider books. They're, coming, they're making a Batman. And I'll, I'll, I'm totally going to get to that. Daredevil's coming back. Guardians of the Galaxy. Drax is getting a book that by I your know. boy, CM Punk. No. Best in the Galaxy is the... Uh, the tagline for Drax. And the first issue has got him like in a intergalactic fighting championship. So, yeah. Way to go, Punk. Uh, Howard the Ducks coming back again. Nova's coming back. Star-Lord's getting a book again. Venom. 
Space Knight. You know, I don't know if you've read uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, but it was revealed that, you know, the symbiotes are supposed to be like a, like almost like a, a protective force for the universe or something. Oh, crap. God. Yeah. Uh, Howling Commandos of S.H.I.E.L.D. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uncanny Humans, Karnak, Angela Asgard's Assassins, Squad of Supreme, Extraordinary X-Men, Uncanny X-Men, All New X-Men, Old Man Logan, Only Wolverine, and Deadpool. So, yeah. Out of those That's, titles, uh, there are a few that, that pique my interest, but some of them just like, why? Yeah. Um, like, I'm, I'm a big Spider-Man fan, so obviously I, I would love to... If I had the the greenbacks, I'd love to sit back and and pick up all of those Spider Man books, but that's not going to happen. Yeah, it's it's a it's a lot. Speaking of greenbacks, I just want to throw this in there. If you guys don't know, today, this Wednesday, Comic Book Day, Ninja Turtles fifty is today in shops. Nice. Go pick that up. It's a great book. I recommend it. Invincible Iron Man number one. So, uh, they're teasing a big change for Tony Stark you know uh, Bendis is writing this book um, the tagline for the book is upgrade uh, I have read that Mary Jane Watson is going to be joining the cast of the Iron Man book I read that as well uh, that's kind of weird very a force whatever a force to be reckoned with that's great for the ladies that you're finally getting an all team ladies book but you know I I, they couldn't have come up with a better name. Yeah, it's a terrible name, A Force. I don't know why A Force tagline A Force to be reckoned with. I was just gonna say yeah, something it's, like it's, that. You know, um, all new, all different Avengers. Wait, who does it? Does it say who the cast is for this all women team? What characters are you using? I believe they're using Miss Marvel, She Hulk. Um, I, I actually don't have a list of who all the characters are. Miss Marvel or Captain Marvel? I believe Captain Marvel. Okay. Um, yeah, there's... It's, it's The weird thing is, this, as much as they're revealing about this stuff, mm -hmm. they're not really giving you everything. Um, it's, there's a lot of speculation on it. Um, it is going to be She-Hulk, Medusa, Captain Marvel, Dazzler, Nico Minoro, I don't even know who that is. And the Sing Runaways. And Singularity. Singularity, I don't know. Nico's from uh, The Runaways. Okay. So that is your A Force. Um, that is a book I won't be reading. Yeah, Agents of Shield. Not not that it's a slam towards, you know, um, a, a female group of women, which I believe there should be more books like that. But it's just the cast just doesn't really do it for the me. The female, the all female X Men book was great. I mean, with I think they had Bishop and Puck. Yeah. But it was a majority. No, that was X Force. Led. That was the uh, X Force book. When okay, Storm then there was that. just an all Yeah, it was just called X-Men. That was the one right. that was written by Brian Wood. That was a good book. It was a good book. Uh, all new, all different. We all know who this is. We've talked about it before because they spoiled it months ago. Thor, Vision, Captain America, Sam Wilson, Captain America. Miss Marvel, Iron Man, Nova, and a dark-suited Spider-Man. Which, um... Now, is that another... Miles Morales. Okay. I don't know, uh... Why, I don't know why I just read that. Because I knew it was Miles Morales, but apparently, whoever this person is, was like, oh, all new, all different Wolverine, uh, that's totally going to be X-23's book. Right, right. Um, the tagline on that book is, the best is at what she does. You know, it's nice to see that they, that they kind of rebooted their universe, but they decided not to bring Wolverine back, but they did. Yeah, with Old Man Logan. Yeah, with Old Man Logan, which is going to be weird. But that's something I would actually be interested in reading because he's going to have retained all the experiences that he had, obviously, from the Old Man Logan book, but be in current settings. So he's going to interact with all these people, spoiler alert, that he murdered in his X-Men team. Right. Um, all new X-Men number one. You've got everybody on that team with the minus of Jean Grey and the addition of X-23. So it's pretty much what the team was pre- Secret Wars, but you're losing Jean Grey. So where's Jean at? Um, Jean is showing up in another book. I can't remember what it is. Um, I'm sure I'll, I'll figure it out. Amazing Spider-Man, number one. Dude, it sounds to me like they're pretty much making Spider-Man like Batman, like Iron Man. 
Like they're going the to Batman elevate, Inc. Yeah, they're going to elevate Peter Parker to a uh, Tony Stark type character. Yeah, I just saw that with uh, like Parker Industries being very right. global now. Right. He's getting a new suit um, and a spider car. The spider buggy. Yeah, it's not. It's it's actually kind of cool looking. It looks like this weird, like sleek, and then it like gets spider legs. It's really weird, but mm-hmm. I, I don't know where that's gonna fit in. Angela Ansgard's assassin. You know, she's gonna be the queen of hell, I guess. Yes, yeah, she really. So I mean, does that book was so so from because I remember I was still at the shop when that came out. I read like the first two or three issues, and it just it really didn't do anything for me. Yeah, I, I read it and. I mean, they introduced a transgender character that was that's great for the, the you know, the community. The book sucked though. Um, Ant Man is coming back with his own book. Mm-hmm. Uh, the tagline on it is "Once a Criminal." Uh, it appears just from the cover art in the book that he's going to be you know, hanging with uh, villains. Okay. So it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. It's, he's considering. I mean, with all the work they put in with this Ant Man movie and trying to get that character over yeah why would you drag him back into it and, and it almost feels to me like they're trying to they're trying to match a little more of um the concepts taken from the uh the movie into the book gotcha which i mean you know what, whatever i I've speculated they were going to do that from the beginning yeah um Catherine Rimmel's back with the book obviously you know carol Danvers ain't going nowhere no, no. The Carnage thing, I'm not sure what the deal is with them um, giving Carnage a book. I mean, I know he's kind of a popular character. It just doesn't seem... It just seems kind of out of left field for me. For him to be getting a title. Right. Uh, I'm sure that'll be one of the first cancels. <laughs> um, Descent in the Madness is the tagline. Who knows? Contests of Champions. Um, when Heroes They can't change the him. They can't make Carnage like an anti-hero like they did Venom Lethal yeah, Protector. No, that's, that's, no, Carnage is... You're going to ruin the character. That's like making Joker a superhero. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. But they didn't. They don't say that that's what's happening, so I'm just speculating So here. Contests of Champions will be based on the mobile fight. The, uh, like I said, the, the fighting game. Okay. Uh, Daredevil's getting relaunched with a sidekick really and it looks like a, 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 a different costume Deadpool who cares Doctor Strange back that's awesome the Strange is getting a new book that I could see I mean he's got a movie coming out yeah. why not right I feel like Strange should have a book oh yeah you know it's the mystic part of the, of the Marvel U needs to be explored and who better to explore than the Strange one Right. Um, Drax, like I said, CM Punk. I mean, there's the cover for you. It's, it's you know, seriously intergalactic fighting. You notice he's got the X's on his hands, the straight edge? Oh, Jesus. Yeah, so, you know, and and the bad thing is, is CM Punk's writing a book, but he ain't writing it by himself. It's him and Colin Bunn. I, I'll pass on that. I, I really don't care. Um, the new Guardians of the Galaxy book, uh, Peter Quill is out. Really? Um, yeah, well, he's getting his own book. No, okay, yeah. And but there's a new Star Lord, hmm. and it's a woman. Okay. And most speculation is that it's probably Kitty Pryde. Yeah, I can see that. Which you know, I mean, that's that's where they've been going with that in Guardians of the Galaxy. If you've been reading Guardians, so it's an obvious go. Um, Extraordinary X Men. Um, you're getting Storm finally leading a team again. Uh, the team will consist of Iceman, Nightcrawler, Colossus. This is where young Jean Grey shows up. Uh, Magic and Old Man Logan. Hmm. So that book I would actually be interested in reading. That's a nice team. Um, the aforementioned Guardians of the Galaxy with Lady Star Lord. Um, it's going to be her, um, Venom, which for some reason whoever wrote this article uh, has Venom as a new member. But... Uh, Thing is the new member, not Venom. Venom's been on the team for probably 10 issues or more now. Right. So it's going to be uh, Kitty Pride, Star-Lord, Venom, Thing, Drax, Groot, and Rocket will be leading the team. Um, Hawkeye is back. Where's Gamora? That's, she's not, uh, oddly not in the roster. Okay. Um, there's, obviously, they're not going to tell why, I'm sure. I'm sure she'll show up at some time. Uh, Hawkeye's back. It looks like he's been aged up. And uh, Kate is also a part of that book, the, the female Hawkeye. Okay. What was her name? Kate? 
Bishop. Bishop. Was it Bishop? Yeah. Okay. Howard the Duck, who cares? You know, I tried reading Howard the Duck, I just don't give a crap. Um, the Howling Commandos of S.H.I.E.L.D., it's almost like it's a monster book. It sounds, well... It, it, to me, just from the look of the cover, it looks kind of like uh, Frankenstein. Oh, like uh, the uh, Agents of, uh, what was it, Agent of Shade? Yeah, Agent of Shade, where it's just like, you know, a team of monsters. But instead of being led by a monster, they're led by Dum Dum. Which is kind of weird. Uh, yeah. Jasper Sitwell, Hit Monkey, Man Fibian, Man Thing, Werewolf by Night, and Things. Led by Dum Dum Duggan. Illuminati, uh, really, that's kind of pointless to me. Uh, Invincible Iron Man, you know, it'll, it'll be nice to see if he's not the superior Iron Man. I was actually enjoying that they made him a tall dick. You know, if you're going to go with him being a dick, go all the way. You know, go big or go home. And that's what I feel like Superior Iron Man was right now. I'm not really sure I care about that. Karnak, I don't care about. Um, Thor, it is awesome to see that they're continuing with Jane. Mm -hmm. um, if you didn't know that that Jane was Thor now, well, you do. Yeah, no, I knew that. I mean, I was, people listening are gotcha, paying attention. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, Miss Marvel, obviously, Kamala Khan continuing on. That hero's been very successful for them. Yeah. Um, the new Avengers team. It's Hulkling, Wiccan, Clint, Hawkeye, Songbird, Squirrel Girl, and Sunspot. And he's the cover's got them, as I'll show you here. And Sunspot is holding an aim card. Okay. Which says uh, Avengers Ideas Mechanics. We aim to help. That book sounds bad. Nova's back, and it looks like it's going to be Sam and his father. Okay. So you're getting two Nomas. Uh there's some speculation that it might not be, uh, God, for some reason I can't remember Sam Alexander's father's name. It's but, not the original Nova, right? Richard Ryder? No, but there's speculation that it might be okay. Richard Ryder and not actually Sam's father. Um, Old Man Logan's probably one of the most interesting books, in my opinion, on this list. I mean, I already said why. Uh, Captain America and the Falcon thing. Cap Sam Wilson, Captain America. I'm sorry, Captain America, Falcon thing. I said. Um, it looks like it's going to have to do with, like, a parting of ways between him and Steve Rogers. Hmm. Like, uh, again, I'm just not interested in that. Scarlet Witch, I'm not really interested in either. I mean, does it's, that, to me, is, like, another book's just going to be immediately, you know. Yeah. It'll make it, if it makes it six issues, it won't make it seven. Um, Silk, you know, I was reading Silk. Eh, you know, she's really like a spider lady. Yeah. So, it's kind of like, eh, we already have that. Uh, then you've got Spider-Gwen. I have absolutely no interest in following Spider-Gwen whatsoever. I am curious to see how Miles is going to fit into the new, to the Marvel, Marvel U. U. Now, with Miles jumping into the Marvel U, are the Marvel characters going to have recollection of the Marvel U, uh, the Ultimate Universe? I would assume so. Um, because during Secret Wars, there was, like, a book where the, you know how those, I guess, inversions were happening where two planets were meeting up? Yeah. And the Illuminati were pretty much destroying the other Earth? Yeah. Well, the last two Earths before Battle World was created, which is pretty much the Doctor Doom controlled world of Secret Wars, they were the last two worlds to collide. Right. So they have had interactions. Like, you had... Tony Stark having interactions right. with Ultimate Tony but Stark. But I'm saying yeah. like this new this They're, new Marvel universe, all new, all different Marvel universe, it consists obviously of characters from both. So that's what I'm saying. Like, is it one of those things like, well, we realize our world fought and they became one now? I would assume so. Because I mean, you know, with like old man Logan, clearly they're talking about him having recollections of his past. Okay. But now being in the present Marvel U. Like, and how is he going to react to seeing a different future than the one he lives? So, obviously, they have to go. I mean, they're doing an eight-month jump from the end of Battle World to the start, or the end of Secret Wars to the start of well, all Secret the Wars different. just wrapped up, didn't it? Um, or is not it still yet. going? No, it's still going. going. You know, 2099, dude, I don't care what anybody says, the costume is sweet. Yeah, I no, like I agree. It. Costume looks real good. Um, I don't know how long it'll stick around, but it's cool. Um... Especially with them saying that he's not Spider-Man 2099 anymore. But 
they give him a new costume and got his own book. So, yeah, yeah. apparently he is. Yeah, totally. Um, this is Spider-Woman pregnant, being a superhero. This is a terrible idea. This cover looks horrible. When you talk about, like, weird... When they talk about weird... Anatomy. Anatomy. Anatomy and just yeah, unnatural posing. Back looks right? Her really... back looks like it's broke. Yeah. Like, I... I did you have to put so much curvature in her back? Yeah, it looks, to really, it looks like a greater than, so less much? than sign. Right? It does. It just looks wrong. And then who the hell's going to want to... Like, seriously, you can't be pregnant and be a superhero. No, I agree. Like, what supervillain is not just going to be like, I'm going to punch her right in the belly. Yeah. Fight over. It's ridiculous. Done. It's a wrap. It's a terrible, terrible... You know, when we have... when we, when we we Whenever we do the episode about women in comics dedicated... And we have your friend on. I totally must bring up the concept of a pregnant superhero, like, because I don't know if some women are like, yeah, that's because like, I think it's just ridiculous. Um, Squadron Supreme, who cares? Star Lord, you know, I didn't really care for his solo book before, so I mean, it's it's a lot of stuff that you don't don't really care about. The Ultimates team is really weird. Um, you've got Black Panther. Blue Marvel, Miss America, Captain Marvel, who seems to be in a lot of books now. Yada, yada. It's just, you know, it's... I don't know, man. Um, I'm not going to sit here and go over any one of this list because there's not really a whole lot of books I want to talk about. Uh, but I am to wrap... Um, uh, totally Awesome Hulk. I told you I would come back to this. Totally please, Awesome please Hulk. Please do. Totally Awesome Hulk is going to be Amadeus Cho. Yes, that I heard. And he is going to be looking at the idea of being the Hulk in a completely different way. He's going to be excited about it. Um, you know, I don't really know how good this is going to be, but it sounds interesting to me. So anyway. where's Bruce Banner? Ah, they're not saying. Hmm. That's the weird thing is the Hulk in the Bruce Banner... Um, Form is not showing up at all hmm. in any of the solicitations. You know, it's interesting. Will it be good? Who knows? But that, that's really all I got. So, all new, all different Marvel now starting this month. Oh, DC horror covers. 25 of them. Underwhelming, kind of, really. Some of them look cool. Most of them look like crap. Flash is some weird, like, mutant Ninja Turtle thing. It's, it's terrible looking. Let's check them out. Look at them. Some of them are cool. Some of them are not so cool. But uh, that's all I got. That's, uh, as always, you can check out everything we do at comicsremix.com, comicsremix at Facebook, uh, tweet us at comicsremix at Spinner Rack, uh, any questions, comments, feedback, Brian at comicsremix, Junior at comicsremix, hit up Alex at comicsremix, uh, Shylon, sh- I just said that all wrong, Shy Town Cylon, right? Yeah. <laughs> Instagram, yeah. this made like a new word of Shylon. Uh, he, should, he should change the script. He should, I'll tell him. But, uh, you know, as always, check out our blogs and everything we do. That's all. And uh, we're going to be on a bye next week, so we'll see you back here in two weeks. For sure. For more comics leading into Halloween. Let's Talk Toys coming soon. Let's Talk Twizzles. Yep. It's going to be stuff. I'm excited. End of the season's coming up really quick. Uh, about another month and a half left of uh, the Spinner Rack and the Lockup. So, um... If there's anything you guys want us to talk about or get in, let us know before the season wraps up because then we won't be back till probably February, March. Uh, Let's Talk Toys will continue through as well as our blogs and stuff because, you know, how else are we going to give you our opinions during the holiday season? Right. Excuse me, during the holiday season. So. All right, that's it. We'll see you all back here in two weeks. Be Peace. safe.